Okay, so what we need to do is we need to now create another event listener for the submit button. So where do we have that? Here we go. So let's create another event. Let's make it the first one because you know the submit button is probably the uh, most important thing. So hdc underscore el dot submit dot add event listener. Um, we'll make it a, a, a click. And the function we will call um, hdc underscore submit. Right? Yeah. And we'll create uh, a new function up here for that. So function hdc underscore submits. Now remember, the first thing we need to do is we need to check whether we're even allowed to submit in case maybe someone was nefarious and poking around. So we need to go if can submit, then continue. Else, well actually we don't even, we don't even really need it else. Um, so that's, that's what we got here. So now what we need to do, we want to basically grab kind of like what we did here. We want to grab all these elements, uh, that, sorry, the values of all these elements and store them in an object. And then what we can do is we can basically convert that object into JSON. We can stringify it and convert it to JSON. And then we can send that uh, information uh, via Ajax to wherever it needs to go. But we'll, we'll do the server side stuff um, probably next visit video. I mean, this video is already uh, getting north of an hour and we still got a lot left to do. So I'll, I'll, I'll include the server side stuff when I kind of convert this into a WordPress plugin. And then you'll see how I do the kind of Ajax and the server rendering stuff. So for now, let's kind of just cheat and copy that. And what we'll do, we'll call this um, let's comments equal, because it's going to be an object. And we will steal that. Oops, sorry. We'll do that. We'll do that. And we also need um, the reaction. So the selected, well, we actually, we need, Oh yeah, because we're storing reaction in the variable reaction, so we don't even need we don't even need to recheck it. So boom, there's the there the, there's our comment. So let's just um co let's just console log that. So this um this should work. So um, hello world, how are you today? Email um. Hello at today.com or Kim, uh, Dylan, and let's um, let's do two. So let's do so. First, let's submit this. So here we go. We can see this is the full comment. Uh, you know, so reactions null. It's getting the data correctly. Um, let's do something broken. Like let's add uh, I don't know a bunch of spaces before Dylan, and let's also create a reaction. So as you can see, the comment has correctly trimmed Dylan. Even, even though I got all these spaces here, the spaces don't occur in Dylan because we did that trim and it's correctly got angry. And let's change that to, I don't know, like. And as you can see, it's got the reaction saved as like. So basically the uh, quote, submitting quote, quote unquote is pretty much done now. But what we want to do is we want to also kind of reset the form so that you can maybe reply to someone else or set a new comment or give some kind of, you know, like basically right now, I mean, if I didn't have this console up here, if I click submit, there's absolutely no visual feedback for the user to know that, hey, stop clicking submit, it's submitting. So what we want to do is we actually want to disable the submit button as soon as we click it. And then uh, once again, I'll get into this on the server side. But once we send that data, we want to only re-enable and clear the form once the server's kind of responded, yes, the comment's been successfully submitted. But for now, we'll just do something like, well, basically we'll uh, just redo this again. Well, we really should abstract this. Let's abstract this because we, we've got this written, in th in th we're gonna be writing this exact same three lines in three different places. So function um, HDC, disable submits and inside there we'll just copy and paste that 
So now instead of copying and pasting the same freaking code three times, uh, we'll just do this. So abstraction is really important because as you can imagine, not only is we just, you know, not very uh, optimized to have the same code written three different places, but now like, let's say we ever want to add or change this code. Well, before we had to change it in three different places, which can, especially on larger projects and larger files can get confusing and hard to track down and easy to miss. But since we've abstracted it, we just edit this one function and know it's gonna, you know, work across the board. So now once we've um, submitted, so let's uh, do some test. So now once we've submitted, it's been disabled and I was, like, I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, you can definitely hear that. So it's not letting me resubmit. So that's pretty good. So we actually have the create a comment or create a reply working pretty well. I mean, it looks pretty good considering that the site itself doesn't really have any styling, um, but we still need a really kind of important part, an important aspect, and that is displaying existing comments, explain comments that already may have been saved to the site. So now we need to go back into our index.html file. And this tour, let's make that uppercase. So now we got, so all of this, if you remember, all of this is inside um, HDC create comment. That's all inside there. But now we're gonna be working inside this other div we originally created HDC comments, which is gonna show the existing comments. So just like we did before with leave reply, we're gonna to wanna to put probably an H3 tag and we're going to want to call it, um, we'll just call it comments. Simple and clean, we'll just call it comments, right? So now we have this comments here. And we probably wanna add a bit of uh, padding there. I think we wanna add a bit of padding, a bit of white space. So let's actually add some margin to the styling here. Let's do uh, 40 pixels margin top, just to add a bit of, a bit of space. There, a bit of separation there between the comment form and where the comments themselves are going to uh, display. So now let's um, figure out how we're gonna format this. So I guess, I don't think I'm gonna to wanna to do threaded comments now. Thre getting threaded comments working is actually kind of complicated about when to style it, when to thread it, how to kind of nest the comments. That's kind of a, a big bone to chew in a live video. Um, I may do like a follow-up video, like a third video, uh, adding in that kind of functionality, but now for the sake of brevity, let's just not worried about uh, threaded comments. Every comment will kind of be a, a parent comment, if you will. But maybe we can do, it would be kind of fun. Maybe we can add in some kind of Reddit voting system, like an upvote, downvote for comments. That could be kind of cool. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be too, too hard to implement. So what we'll do is we'll each comments, will have a class called HD comments. And down the road, we'll also want to be like, I don't know, HDC level zero or something to designate that it's a parent comment. And then like a, the first child will be like a level one. That way you can kind of reply to the parent, reply to replies, that kind of thing. But we're not gonna be doing, like I said, we're not gonna be doing any of that stuff right now. So right now we're just gonna treat every single comment as a parent comment. So how do we wanna format this? So let's go back to what is the comment. So the comment contains the comment itself. So we'll go div class equals HD comments, comments. Kind of a weird name to put it. And inside this, this is where the, you know, this is where the actual comments will be placed. So it's just, it's not gonna look nice. <laughs> but you know, so this is the actual comment that a person posted. Um, underneath that, we're going to want, uh, we'll probably want like another grid system. We're gonna wanna have the publish date div class equals HDC. Yeah, by the way, we should just call this, instead of HD comp, we should call this HDC 
is there already an HTC comment anywhere? Does that already exist? So this HTC comments. Okay, so this can actually work well, unless I forgot that I. Okay, good. Yeah, so this can actually work well. Let's just uh, minimize that again. So HD comment, and we'll call this HTC Meta. And inside HTC Meta, we're gonna want three columns. We're gonna want three columns. So the first column will do um, name, date, upvote, down. Actually, you know what, let's do two columns. So the first column will contain both the name and the publish date. And the second column will be uh, just for the upvote, downvote. So let's do something like, uh, let's call this class equals HDC meta date author. We'll call this um, class equals HDC vote vote. So this is kind of what the comment would look like. So we'll have, um, it's the best way to format this. I guess probably, I mean, generally speaking, comments are usually arranged by date, right? So I think we should have the date first. Let's call it, I don't know, what's the date today? The 11th? So let's call it May 11th, 2009. And then I guess inside of span, so we can easily um, style it. We'll go span class equals HDC meta author. And we'll call it, I don't know, um, Dylan. We'll use, we'll, we'll use my name. And then the voting. So how do we want the voting to work? So I guess the voting has, I guess the voting also has two columns, right? So the first column should be a span and, the, and that will contain the value. So I have plus, three, the score. And then we'll have another grid column. We'll call it HTC vote options. And this will contain two more spans for, I don't know, we'll just call it upvote and downvote. Actually, let's get, let's get some of those um, HTML character, code, up, down, triangles. Let's use those as the kind of upvote, downvote. Okay, so already got something here. Okay, so there's some triangles. So uh, let's use this one as upvote. So 9650. And the down, what's the, what's the I guess this one, 660. So once again, like most things, when I first just kind of do the HTML syntax, it's not gonna look good. So that's stupidly ugly. <laughs> so now, but now that we kind of cut the format and, and stuff ready, we can uh, start styling this to look a lot nicer. So the first thing we wanna style is, I guess the comment itself. So each comment will have, let's give it a border. I want it to be a really light border. So what's the lightest? I think I'm using C, right? Oh, I'm using E. I even got E. So let's give it a light, nice border. Let's give it a border bottom. Let's give it like a three pixel border bottom and slightly. So let's do C. So I think this is usually a kind of a cool effect. See how that kind of happens? And what happened here? That should be contained. So what did I screw up? So I screwed something up here in my HTML. Oh, I see. So I just, I simply just targeted the wrong. There we go. That's better. Um, also, we want to add some padding. So what's the traditional padding we used? We used um, 40 pixels, right? But this is already an internal. So I say we go lighter and do like a 20 pixel. There we go. And now 
I don't know if you can really tell in the video, but there's actually additional space here than there is here, and it looks wrong. And the reason for that is because the P tag, sorry, the P tag, the, the paragraph tag also has um, padding or margin. So as you can see, it's got the default block margins and stuff. So we're gonna wanna remove the margin top. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna do, uh, unfortunately, this is one of those things where we can't or really shouldn't have specific, like I, we shouldn't put like a specific class for this P, as, as convenient as that would be, um, it's kind of complicates things when we want to, for instance, export these automatically through a WordPress loop or whatever, however you want to retrieve the data. So instead, we're going to do the bad type of selecting, as I call it. So we're going to want to go HD comment P. And this time it is the underscore comment because we're only targeting this div. And we also want to do um, we want to do the first, the first child only. Sorry, it's only supposed to be uh, one, I think. Yeah, so we only want to target the first child. And then we want to go on um, margin top zero. And, hmm? Oh, I always... This is such an amateur mistake, but I always screw up how first child works. That's how it's supposed to be formatted. And it's still not working. Was it supposed to be padding? Oh, I spelled margin wrong. <laughs> So what's that? We're at, we're at seven stupid mistakes now? Seven stupid mistakes? Oh yeah, I forgot I got to... Uh... We're, we're like seven or eight really stupid amateur mistakes now. Kind of, I'm kind of embarrassed, but uh, you know, whatevs. It's actually still not working. What, what am I screwing up here? Oh my God, guys, I just tried like every, I just threw everything at the wall to be like, what's the stupid thing I'm missing? The stupid thing I'm missing is once again, the name of the div. So I'm using HD comment, but it should be HDC comment. So now it's like, oh, I, you know, <laughs> so HDC comment first child P should now work. So is it this way? There we go. Okay, success. So basically the way I the way I first originally had it, as in it's supposed to be uh, you know, colon first child. The my selector was actually right the first time, but it wasn't working, which made me throw things at the wall with trial and error. Ay ay ay. Okay, but we got it working now. So now only the first only the first paragraph will get rid of the second margin. So if I were to do something like add in a second paragraph here. Apparently I accidentally hit the you know, this still correctly has the correct um, margin on top. We just didn't want the first one to have a top margin because we already have the padding built right into the comment div. So I'm really sorry about all that trial and error and trying to figure out my own stupidity, but uh, hey, we got there in the end. So now what we need to do is we need to format this HDC meta tag. So the first one is gonna be in columns. So we're gonna do another display grid. Um, grid template columns. So how do we want this to display? So we're gonna want this to be pretty wide and this doesn't need to be as wide.
So I forget what the actual um, entity is for. Oh, so I need the hashtag. That's why. Okay. So that's one more thing. So we now figured out two things here. So this needs a hashtag to work. And we want this to be um, one FR. And then we need to reserve another amount of space for um, the vote. This is also supposed to be a class, not a not a not an ID. And then what we want here is we want the HDC vote. We want to align it to the right. We want to align the text to the right. Oh, and we also want um, this to align center. So it's once again, this still isn't going to look good, but it'll look slightly better. <laughs> So, so we got the date here, we got the user's name, we got upvote, downvote. It's not working yet, but we're gonna now display this. So I don't want this to be here, I want this display to the left. I want it to be looking kind of like this. And I think I'm gonna want these up and down arrows on top of each other. So let's figure out how to do that. I don't ever, I actually don't think I've ever really positioned anything like that before in, uh, in a CSS grid. So span is already in line. So let's style this HTC vote options. And let's actually, you know what, let's make this a vote, uh, sorry, a grid as well. Display grid. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go um, grid template columns and we're just gonna go one, which would, should force it to stack um, top to bottom. Perfect. So now what we wanna do is we want this to be to the left. So we've got enough room, we got more than enough room here to display it. So how do we want this? Maybe, maybe set a maximum width. Max width equals, I don't know, 40 pixels. So now it's 40 pixels, but it's still So maybe that's not what we want. Maybe what we want is to do make this a grid. Let's let's try this. So now this is also a grid, but now we can go grid. Um, yeah. Template columns, and we can go one fr plus whatever the width of that is. I don't know, like ten pixels or something. So maybe a bit more than 10 pixels it looks like we're going to need. So let's give that, I don't know, let's give it 20 pixels, lots of extra room. So there we go. So now we have it top and bottom and we can go align items center. And yeah, see now that looks good, right? That looks really good. So that's under HDC vote. So let's get that working and let's refresh. So there we go. So that looks really nice, right? So now let's um, format this a little bit nicer. So what do we want this to do? So let's do, um, let's set the font size to be slightly smaller. Cause at the end of the day, the comment is more important than the person's name. So let's do um, font size, um, 0 0.85 REM. So this will basically, once again, use the default user's native styling to kind of work with it. And then we'll have the author here. So let's style the author next. And the author is kind of more important. So let's do um, a margin left. Let's do, I don't know, 22 pixels at a lot of margin. And let's, um, let's make a bold. Doesn't need to be extremely obvious, but I mean, make a bold. That way, if you're seeing, if you're going down a list, you can easily quickly see Oh, this was Dylan, this was Dylan, this was Mark, this was Jacob, this was Amy, this was, you know, whoever, whoever's commenting. So, I mean, overall, I think this looks pretty good. Um, I guess now the next thing to do would be to actually activate these up and down votes so that they actually work. Let's actually create a voting system. So when we're doing a voting system, you want to wait so that when we click the up and upvote and downvote, uh, we need to A, make it so that we can send a trigger to the server. 
B, we need to make sure that we're actually getting the value of um, the comment we're selecting. Because I mean, you could have 10 comments. I want to make sure if I upvote this, it doesn't change the score on another comment. And the last thing I want to do is I want to be able to enable, I want to visually show once a vote has been cast. And I want to disable voting once a vote has been cast so that you can't, I can't just, so like I can't click up 100 times and increase this to 103. And do we want to have downvotes as far as like in the negatives? Or do you just want to cap it at zero? Let's do downvotes as well. Let's do downvotes as well. So the best way to do this is basically each comment will need to have a unique and independent ID. In WordPress, basically every comment, every post, every page already has a unique ID. It's called a post ID. So in WordPress, we would actually just use that post ID since it's already a unique identifying number. For us, for this video, we're just going to enable it ID one, two, three, four, that type of thing. So the actual comment itself is right here. This is each and every comment. So what we want to do is we want to give it a unique ID. So let's call it um, ID equals HD comment, and we'll do underscore plus the ID. So under the assumption that this comment has an ID of one, this is the format. So, so we always know that HD comment underscore value will target the specific ID of that comment. But we should also add it into here. We should add, um, let's give this a class name. HDC vote underscore one. So we'll do same premise. So anytime we target a class HDC vote underscore the ID, we know that we're going to be targeting this. And for this, we'll give it a class of HDC votes upvote. We'll call it HDC upvote. And this we'll call HDC downvote, right? And we'll also give these the uh, uh, data attribute. We'll give these data attributes. Data ID equals one. So this way we know that as soon as we select it, we can get the data attribute so that we know what ID we're selecting and we can target this directly to increase or decrease the value. So to give you an example of what this would look like with multiple comments, let's actually add another two comments. So let's change the IDs here. So this is ID. So let's change this to two. Two. Let's give this a score of 13. Change these IDs to two. This is three. Let's give this a value of negative six. This guy's a loser. His opinion's worthless. Three. Um, we'll change this to, I don't know, the ninth and we'll make uh who's a loser who's some who's someone we hate trump sure trump actually let's make him donald <laughs> so donald's the loser with a negative score and uh this person commented on the 10th and um i don't know we'll give it a, a name of hulk the hulk Bruce Ban well, Dr. Dr. Hulk will be the voter on that. So once again, just to show you visually how it will look with multiple. So now this is what it looks like with multiple comments. Now, stylistically, it's up to you on what you like. For instance, right now, they're all touching top to bottom. But it might be a good idea to also be like, I don't know, margin bottom. You know, uh, I don't know, 12 pixels or something to add a bit of space. Completely up to you on what you like. Personally, I like the space. So I'm going to actually add in the 12 pixels in there. But I mean, it's completely up to you. And another thing to notice is that we don't actually have mobile friendliness. So we'll, we'll do mobile styling very soon as well. But basically right now, even though it's still, you know, that works. But once you get to a certain threshold, instead of these being in columns, it should be full width columns. You know, once we get small enough, you know, we should probably collapse these, you know, make it a bit more legible. I don't know, maybe not. I mean, this is really small. I mean, what phone is under, you know, 370 pixels wide? It still looks fine. So maybe I won't do it for here, but it should, you know, definitely be here. That email and your name and these should probably be formatted and looked a lot nicer once you're on the small 
mobile uh, uh, viewports. But we will get into that in a bit. For now, let's just focus on focus on getting the voting system working. So just uh, quickly before I forget, um, it was this one, right? Yeah. Let's do a margin bottom total pixels just to get that up and running. Great. So now we need to create uh, LM, we need to create the event listeners for when you click an upvote or downvote. And we're going to do that very similar to how we've already created it here. But first, let's uh, let's actually add these to our constant. So we'll call these um, votes. Votes. And uh, what's the name of the div? So we got HDC upvote and HDC. Okay, actually, yeah. So we got a HDC upvote and downvote, right? So HDC. Upvote helps if I spell vote right and downvote. So there we go. But this should be um, we'll actually just call it upvotes. We'll call this downvotes. So there we go. So now we'll have um, you know uh, the constant HDCEL will contain all the upvotes and all the downvotes on the entire page automatically select it nice and easy. But we need to do another for loop here. So this first for loop is for the reactions. And now we need to do uh, also add those event listeners with a for loop using uh, uh, using the upvotes and downvotes. So let's do upvotes, upvote, and click. And the function will be HDC votes that will be the function so here's what's interesting because we each each upvote has a parity with a downvote we know that there's one of each so i mean normally you would do something like do another for loop and do that one for down votes but we don't actually need to do that because we're already parsing through it so we can actually just use the same for loop to also initiate the down votes now here's the problem though, since so we would need to create two different functions. We need to do HDC upvote, HDC downvote for each of these possibilities. But that just seems really redundant since we're pretty much doing the same amount of calculations and figuring for both of those possibilities. So instead we're going to modify this a little bit. So instead of calling a function directly, we're going to basically do an inline function. So we're going to do function like that. And inside this function, we're going to now call the HDC vote. The reason we're going to do that is because now we're allowed to do parameters. As you see, when you call a function directly, you're not allowed to have parameters and be like var1, var2. You're not allowed to do that. So, But by doing a function calling another function, the function we're calling inside that function is allowed to have parameters, which I know is stupid and confusing. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get uh, the first thing that's actually the, the we're going to want to be able to figure out what elements actually being clicked, and then we're going to send a boolean. So upvote will be true, and downvote will be false. So there we go. So that's what that looks like. So now we can have a function called HDC vote, which uh, let's put it up here. Function HDC vote and we'll do um, we'll call it L for element and we'll go um, vote so that we know which way we're voting. So um, let's uh, let's show you. So let's do um, console dot log el. Sorry guys, my keyboard uh, it's an old keyboard and the shift key isn't quite working so well. So that's why sometimes you'll see me kind of mistype things in a weird way. Except for that one there, that's just me not knowing how to type. So basically, what we're console logging here is we're console uh, we're logging the element we clicked, and we're uh, going to log whether we upvoted or downvoted. And this is just to help us test to make sure that we're on the right track here. Let's go to the console log. So already we've got a unread of length of undefined. So I've already screwed something up. So seventy four. So here. So it's saying that upvote has an undefined length, which means I screwed something up here. Oh, because it's upvotes. See that? Always, always me forgetting what I actually called a thing. Man. 
Okay, no errors. So for instance, this says this first one. So I'm gonna click upvote. Okay, so it's as you can see, it's correctly got the correct node and it's correctly said that I'm downvoting. Now if I click, I uh, start upvoting. Now if I click downvote here, it's correctly got the right element clicked and it's correctly saying false. But one thing you'll notice is that like, it doesn't really look right having this cursor here. So we want to, um, we want to fix that in the style. So we'll do um, HDC upvotes. Oh, guys, I didn't want to autocomplete that. But HDC downvotes. And we want to do uh, cursor pointer. So there we go. Now it looks a bit more like, yes, these are clickable buttons. So now that we know what the element is we clicked, we know what the current, uh, uh, whether we upvote or downvote, we need to find out what the value is. So let's go back to our script file, to our voting. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna find out what the value, what the current value is. Is it zero, is it plus three, is it negative nine? We don't know. So let's go, um, let's, votes, let's, let's call it score. Let's score equal E L. Okay, first, first we need to know what the, what the dat attribute. Let's go with, let's go with, um, let's go with uh, comment ID, because that's what it is. It's the ID of the comment, right? So comment ID equals E L dot get attributes uh, data ID. So let's just console log that out is to verify that uh, that uh, we actually are retrieving that correctly. Console's not a function, but I, oh my God, dot. Ugh, me and my amateur mistakes. There, so it's saying correct, it's getting the right ID. So this should say three, perfect. Okay, so we're, we're getting that correct. So now we know what ID it is. So now we need to get the value. We need to figure out what the value is. And by the way, I mean, there's lots of ways we could do it. And it's like right now we're getting the data ID. We could also include the value in there as well. But uh, you know, in the sake of learning and simplicity, as far as the, as far as this, let's just get the value from the, the point of truth here. Um, we're gonna need to do a lot of validations in the back end as well, by the way, because we're using this as the single point of truth Someone could do, someone can manipulate it pretty easily by doing something like this, plus 3,000. And now when they click upvote, it'll increase it to 3,001 and send 3,001 to the server. So we need to make sure that when we actually send an upvote or downvote to the server, we don't send the current, we just send an upvote. And then the server gets and gets the real value from the database to find out what the actual value is and implements it that way. That way people can't cheat the system by manipulating the DOM directly like like I just did. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what this value is. So we're gonna go um, let score equal document dot get element by class name, right? And the class name is going to be HDC underscore vote underscore plus whatever the comment ID is, plus zero, because <laughs> it's, you know, and then we're gonna to wanna to go um, inner text. So we could use inner HTML, but inner text is probably what we actually want here. So let's do um, console.log score. Let's just verify that it actually is called inner text spelt the way I spelt it. Okay, good. So yeah, we're getting the inner text now. So we have the comment ID, we have the score, and we have the inner text. So now what we need to do is we need to actually parse that score. So we need to go um, score equals parse int score. So basically that will strip out the negative and plus sign and actually convert it into a simple you know, uh, an actual integer. So it's no longer being used as a string. It's now being parsed as an actual integer. And now what we can do is we can say if vote 
Because remember, vote up here is a, it's Boolean. It's either true or false. So if it's true, then we upvote. Then we go score equals score plus one. By the way, we could do stuff like score plus plus and stuff like that. But I like the oh, kind of long tail of my math formulas, even if it is a stupidly simple math formula like this, simply because it's just very easy to read for me, for you, for somebody who's never even seen JavaScript. It isn't really familiar with a lot of those shorthands. You just do a long tail and it's just very, it's very readable by anybody. So if vote is false, then score equals score minus one. So great, we're now upvoting and downvoting, but we still need to uh, update the actual DOM to show is that. So the first thing we need to do is, I guess we need to figure out whether we have a positive or negative number here. So if score is greater than zero, then we know it's a positive number. And we can now go score equals score plus, literally a plus, plus score. That way if it's a positive number, it'll say plus number. Um, actually, let's do it this way. If it's, because we don't want to have a plus sign in front of zero, we just want zero. So if it's less than zero, only if it's less than zero, Actually, we don't even do because it'll have a negative automatically. So yeah, if and only if the score is a positive, then we'll add a score. If it's zero or negative, we won't do anything to it. And then what we'll do is we'll, once again, we'll go, so we already got score here. So we'll go, actually we'll do um, score. So we'll target this again. So we'll go score, sorry, we'll go on document, the, uh, uh, you know, a class name, we'll get the class with the ID, um, dot inner text, or should we do the HTML, well, text is fine, um, dot inner text equals score. And this should work, um, let's find out. <laughs> so it's kind of working. So it's working there in the negative. It's working there in the positive, but you saw there were some glitches there. So plus three, and then it's got four plus four, five plus five. Like that's, that's not right. So that's interesting that it's doing it in the uh, upper and lower. So let's actually just do the inner HTML and see whether that actually makes a difference. This might be one of those cases where text isn't the best to uh, then set it. Okay, what did I break? Oh, this is this is why score equals score plus. That was stupid. So yeah, let's do. I'm sure you guys watching the video caught that stupid mistake pretty quickly. So there we go. Now we got a uh, upvote and downvote working pretty well. But as you can see, we can upvote as many times as we want, which obviously we don't want to do. We want to disable that as soon as it's done. So I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to have a class to show it when it's disabled. So let's do um, .hdc vote disabled. And we'll give it, um, we'll set the cursor to um, default, right? And we'll also want another one for selected. So HDC um, vote selected. And we want that to be, uh, so for this we want opacity, I don't know, like 0 0.5. And for disabled we want opacity uh, 0 0.4. So let's actually get this slightly higher, 0 0.6 maybe. So basically here's the state. So it's gonna have normal, which is opacity one. When it's disabled, it's gonna set opacity four, except the one that we actually selected is gonna be 0.6. So that we know that, hey, we still selected it, but like it's disabled and you can't reselect it. So now back to our voting. So now what we wanna do is we wanna actually set those. So remember, we've already got the EL, the element that we clicked here. So we're gonna to wanna to go, um, el.classList 
dot add dot HDC vote disabled. Actually, we were going to want to call this one selected, right? Now here's the problem though. We also want to target the other votes. So we can probably do How do we want to target the votes? I guess we'll have to do, okay, we're going to use a different type of query that we haven't actually um, done before. I forget what it's called. It's our, oh, uh, query select all, that's what it's called. So we're going to do something. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to um, call them um, votes. We're going to create, we're going to kind of create a new object here because that's not going to be an object we're going to create like a new reference to a node so we'll call it el votes and it works by uh, documents dot query selector and query selector all so we want to select multiple we want to select them all and basically now we can use a jquery like syntax so we can do hd comments or uh, what's it called? Yeah, so it is just HD comment. So we can do HD comment underscore plus comment ID so that we're only selecting that comment plus, and then uh, what's our plus HDC vote options plus span so this eel votes now contains every single span inside hdc vote options that belongs to the comment that we're voting on so there we go so now we do another four another four loops so we go on um, four let i equals zero while i is less than eel votes dot length uh, I plus plus to increase its value on every um, iteration. And we basically want to add that disabled list. So we want to add, uh, sorry. We want to add disabled. So what we're doing now is we're, so we've updated the value we've added the selected class to the one that we actually clicked on. And then we looped through uh, this query to add the disabled class to both divs. Um, technically, we only need to add it to the one. Actually, no, we want it to be on both. So now what we want to do is before we actually run through all this, we want to check to see whether the element we clicked on already has this class. If it already has the class, it means that you've already cast your vote and you should not be allowed to vote again. So we're going to do if el dot class list dot contains, and we're going to check to see whether it contains that. And actually, we want to do if it doesn't contain that, then continue. Um, else, just really do nothing. You've already cast your vote. So if the element we click on, can, it does not contain the class vote disabled, continue on and do the rest. So here we go. So if I click down vote, okay, it kind of worked. So it successfully reduced it by one. It changed this class, this class worked. So it's got HDC vote selected. What it didn't do, my query select all apparently didn't work. It didn't add disabled. So we can actually still, so that didn't work. So why didn't it? So now we need to look at my uh, query selector. So let's uh, see what this contains. Let's see whether that's actually even containing anything. It's got an, it's got an empty node list. So it's not, so my query selector all is not right. So I'm, I'm breaking something, so we got HD comment underscore comment ID. Oh, here we go. That's supposed to be a class. 
There we go. So now it actually contains, now it contains what we're looking for. So as you can see, it won't let me upload again, but downvote's still working. So that's interesting. I'm still, uh, oh, duh. So it's not um, EL, it's uh, EL votes I, which I'm sure you astute viewers were probably screaming at your screen, calling me an idiot for missing that and almost, and almost missing this now. Stupid select button, there we go. So now this will, now this will work. So there we go, yeah. So it actually visually shows that it's disabled, visually shows the one that you selected. I could probably make this even more obvious that which one's up and down. But as you can see, I can't select anymore. But I can go and... Okay, so that's interesting. So inner text isn't working on this one here. Let's take a look. Maybe I maybe I screwed something up in the DOM here. Oh yeah, so here it says it says vote. See that's why. See I, I just uh when I was copying and pasting this. I mean this is an issue that you wouldn't have once you automated the um once you've automated the uh um like printing of the comments. That's that's an issue that you wouldn't come across. There we go. Yeah, so now it's working. Negative seven, negative five. Perfect. So we just need to make this a bit more obvious because I that's I don't think it's enough like obvious contrast there. So actually, let's make like disabled like I don't know 0.2 and 0.5 is probably a bit more obvious of a of a difference. There we go. That looks a bit more obvious now that you can easily see which is the one you selected, and it's very obvious that it's been disabled because your vote's been cast. We can also do things like remember it's fonts. So we could also do things like set the uh, the font value. So we could do something like, um, so unfortunately, once again, this isn't the most performance way to do it, but we could do something like um, HDC downvote dot HDC selected. So basically, if the element has both of these classes, then we can do some, wow, my keyboard's really uh, going crazy on me. Then we could do something like, I don't know, color red. So we could do something like that just to make it, you know, boom, down bow. You know what I mean? And because of the opacity, it's not even like an aggressive red. It's kind of a subtle red. And we could do the same for the upvote to make it even more obvious that you selected it. Um, upvote and let's just call it green. What am I, not lazy? So now it's like really super obvious that, oh, that's upvoted, that's downvoted, you know what I mean? So it's very obvious of what you've done. So, I mean, this is pretty much all of the kind of front end that we need. We got the overall design, we have the overall layout, we got pretty much all the JavaScript validation. This is pretty much a done and working, um, you know, commenting system as far as the front end is concerned. Um, this works pretty damned well, if you spell damned right. Yes, at awesome.com, if you spell awesome right, and um, I don't know, we'll call it Donald. Donald's the, or Donal, whatever, you know, submit. So, I mean, as you can see, things are working quite well. Oh, one, one more, okay, so one thing, well, it's an issue that once we get this live in production that we won't have, but as you can see, I've disabled it. The problem is I could still do something like that and it would re-enable, but um, when you do this live and you submit the comment, not only would it disable, it would also remove these and hide it. And then when, like, once the server returns, either there was an error or no, we successfully submitted, we'll reset the form. And that's stuff that we'll deal with once we have the server kind of up and running. And once we start building this into Alberta, uh, build it into WordPress. So um, yeah, so this is, I guess, the first part of the video. We got the front end working all that. Uh, I'll probably record a second version of this tomorrow where I'll go from the ground up and implement in WordPress. So we'll actually save the data to the database. Um, we'll actually read the comments directly from the post in, in WordPress. We'll actually save these scores as custom meta values. Uh, we'll sanitize the content so we can make sure that people can't do things like, you know, we, we wanna make sure people can't like write in code, like JavaScript code and uh, you know, like why am I, 
this damn shift button. You know, we make sure that people can actually write in scripts, uh, you know, JavaScript in here. Like right now, this would actually still submit. You know, you could actually submit this, right? And it actually submits the script in there, which is not good. We need to sanitize and strip that stuff out on the server side. Same thing with SQL, right? Like, you know, people could write in SQL commands and stuff in here. So we're not really sanitizing any of that on the server side. So we'll go over sanitizing all that stuff using native WordPress uh, queries. We'll go over building out the loops. We'll build out a simple option page. So for instance, we maybe, the, maybe you wanna make email optional. Email isn't really that important. It's more just to validate like as a kind of unique user ID so that you can easily see the same user commenting even if they change their name across the board. But it's not really needed. Maybe you want it as, a, as an optional. We'll talk about uh, putting in some anti-spam measures without annoying captures. We'll, uh, you know, without, without needing something like uh, AskMet or anything like that. We'll add in an option. So like for instance, do you want to sort from most recent comment up top? Or do you want the most recent comment to be at the bottom? So we'll add in things like that. Maybe we'll even do things like um, uh, make it so that you can only downvote uh, to zero and you can't have negative numbers. Maybe we'll add that in as an option. Um, another option is like once, so like let's just say I've just downvoted right here. Well, I can't, maybe, I, maybe that was a misclick. So we'll add in, maybe we'll add in some stuff so it's like you can like unclick this to unvote or click up to undo the vote. You just can't, you just can't continue changing, manipulating this as you go. So there's still a lot of stuff that we can do and build in and get this up and working. And uh, who knows, if we have time, maybe I'll implement threaded comments as well. So that we can have like this, for instance, could be a reply to this comment, that kind of thing. And uh, we'll also need a way to display the reaction so that you could see, you know, maybe this person did a smiley face, this person did a happy face, and maybe have a unique score. So above leave reply, we can have like, show all the reactions that have happened on this article, kind of agglomate, uh, uh, amalgamate them up there. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do, but I think we, we, we made it pretty far today. We built out kind of the whole, you know, semantic, you know, HTML. We got the styling and positioning working with CSS, and we got the vast majority of the front end JavaScript. Um, really the only other JavaScript to be like, you know, for little things, like I said, the, you know, improving the voting more, and to basically using Ajax to send uh, the information to the server and then to use Ajax to retrieve a reply from the server so that, for instance, once a comment's been successfully submitted, we can let the user know, give them maybe, maybe display a little notice. Your comment has, is awaiting moderation, you know, please wait for us to either approve or deny it before it appears on the page or, you know, the, the sky's the limit. There's still a lot of things that we can do and build into here. So uh, thank you. This was the first video I've ever done and uploaded to YouTube for web dev. And I hope you like it. I hope uh, you didn't find me too annoying. I hope you weren't too in infuriated with my many, many, many stupid amateur mistakes. But uh, I had fun with it. So, you know, uh, until uh, tomorrow when I start doing the WordPress uh, version, um, goodbye.